All right, so as you can see, we have some tire studs. These are screw in studs. They're a bit expensive. These studs cost me about $1 a piece. You can get them cheaper. There's some cheaper versions on Amazon. I have tried the cheaper version a few years back and they worked fine, but they were out quite fast and I also lost about 10 to 20% of them. I think the cheaper alternative is good if you have some worn out tires that maybe you're just gonna run for another season. Next year, you're gonna buy new tires. If you're looking for studs that are durable, that won't come loose and that you're gonna use for multiple seasons, then I would go with something like this, especially for larger vehicles like a tractor maybe a skid steer. These studs take up quite a lot of space in the rubber of the tire. So regular car tires, they don't tend to take these very well. They also have some that could do with smaller tires with a thinner tread. I have no experience with that, but that could be an option if you're looking to buy some studs that you're gonna use for multiple seasons. And the largest ones they make, I do believe are the ones you're seeing right now. So I drove on these used ones last year for the entire season and you can barely even tell that they've been used. They look almost brand new. I've been quite happy with these. I'm gonna do it again this year. I did pull out the used ones. That's what's great about these. You can just screw them out, use them again next year or put them in new tires or whatever you want. I just pressure wash the tire to get any dirt and grime out of the slots that the tool goes into. The edge on the thread there that bites into the tire is still quite sharp and so I think it'll be, I think you could do this a couple of times. As for the reason that I'm not using snow chains is because, well there's many reasons. One is I don't even think there would be space for snow chains on my rear wheels. I think they would hit the fender because you, you're not getting your chains completely tight to the wheel. There's gonna be some throw in them and it would potentially break my fenders and everything. And also they're a pain to drive on at any high speeds. So for me, I'm snow plowing at different customers and I have to drive some distances on the main road you're not driving with chains at 50 kilometers an hour. The chains also, they mess up the balance of the wheels. Not that tractor tires are entirely balanced anyway, but the chains really don't help. And so wheel bearings and stuff like that are gonna be quite exposed when going at higher speed. For driving off-road and logging and stuff like that, where you're driving very slow and you need that real traction, then yeah, snow chains is the only way to go. But for on-road driving and for snow plowing, studded tires are definitely the best, in my opinion, at least for my use. If you have a tractor that you're only snow plowing for yourself and maybe a neighbor or two, then yeah, chains are just fine. You're not gonna be driving on the main road and you'll have that added traction because that's one thing. With chains, you have a lot better traction on snow and ice than you do with these studs. Like, it's not even comparable. Chains are just, yeah, they provide the best traction you could possibly have on a tractor. But anyway, that's the plan for this video. We're gonna be studying up the tractor tires again this year with, uh, with these studs right here. And we'll talk a little bit about how many studs go in each tire, how deep you should put them, and so forth. So, let's go right to that now. All right, so last year I did this outside before the snow came. This year there's a lot of snow outside and um, I have a plan. I'll jack it up and then we can kind of put in every stud and just spin the wheel. And then once this one is done, we'll do the same for the other wheels as well. I do have a jack that would lift this tractor. It's a 30 ton jack. I've tried lifting like five, six tons with it and it's, yeah, it's some, Harbor Freight stuff. Let's just try to jack it up and see what happens. I think my best bet is gonna be to lift it in the hitch here. Doing that, I'm gonna lift the entire back of the tractor, so it's gonna be a lot of weight, but we're gonna see how that goes. If it doesn't work out, I'm gonna have to figure out something else.
Okay, so that went way better than expected. Let's try to disengage the parking brake now and see. I think I need to start the tractor because the parking brake engages the four-wheel drive. So that might be why. Why won't it move? Seems like the four-wheel drive might be still engaged. Maybe I can just start the tractor, put it in gear, and without the four-wheel drive and diff lock, it should just spin the wheel that's in the air. Okay, so that works out. We can just do it like that. If you have any idea why I can't spin the wheel when the four-wheel drive is disengaged, the parking brake is disengaged, the lever is in neutral, and the range is also in neutral. Explain to me why I can't turn the wheel by hand. Is it just too much resistance in the gearbox? Yeah, I don't know why. Maybe it's something to do with the clutch. I guess it depends what type of gearbox it has. Maybe if I put something on the clutch on the clutch pedal, I could move them. Doesn't matter. Let's just start installing them and I'll just turn the wheels by putting it in gear. Yeah, these are the holes that I made when installing the studs last year. I'll avoid using those again this year, I think. It'll give the studs a bit better grip. But as you can also probably see are these lines here. And those are called siping. It's called the same in Norwegian too. S-I-P. Yeah, I'll put it on the screen. But that's what these slots are called. Or these, like these lines. And I made them myself on, this, on these wheels. They originally didn't have siping. And so I cut them out myself just with a Stanley knife. I called the tire shop about siping these tires. Because they usually have machines that can do this for you. But the machine they had could only do the front wheels. The back wheels here were too big. And that's when he told me I could just do it myself if I had some patience and a lot of time. <laughs> I could use some dish soap and just a Stanley knife. And so that's what I did. This uh, siping right here, when you're driving, they open up like that. Right? I don't know how well you're able to see that. The slit there opens up and that provides just so much more traction. It's incredible how much that helps. So if you have tires like this on your tractor and you're driving on snow and ice, making these siping slits is gonna help so much. And obviously if you do that and stud them, then you have proper winter tires. These tires are industrial road tires, I guess you would call them. And a lot of people drive on just these without slits and without studs during winter, and you can do it. So these are kind of cheaper tires, they're called Alliance Multi-Use 550. So they're a bit cheaper alternative to Michelin and Nokian tires. They're still quite expensive tires, even if it's a cheaper option. So for a brand new set of tires to this tractor, you're looking at about seven to eight thousand dollars US, half the price of Michelin tires. Yeah, I bought these used for a thousand bucks, and I have a thousand bucks worth of studs in them, and a little bit of time in siping them. But I'm quite happy with the purchase. They're quite good tires, and there's also a lot of thread left, at least on the rear tires which are the most expensive. The front ones do have a bit more wear than the back ones. So in the near future, I might have to replace those, 
but these back ones should last for at least a couple of years. What you want to do when installing these studs is find the best area. Uh, if you have this siping going on like I do, you can see I've put the siping as close to the edge here as I could just to leave room for the studs in the middle here without it being too narrow to where you would just pull this piece of rubber right off. So for the rear tires here, I'm using the biggest studs that I could buy at my local dealer. That's just because at least on the edges here, there's quite a lot of thread to where you don't risk puncturing the tire. So that's quite important when buying these studs is to make sure that they're not too long to where you'll puncture your tire, even if they screw themselves in a little bit more than what you intended you still won't puncture the tires. So that's why there's different sizes. I think I can use, yeah, I can probably use the longer ones in the entire rear wheel here, but for the front wheels, I'm gonna use the studs that are just a little bit shorter. And so all you do is just put your tool in the drill and then you put the stud in the tool. And as I said, I'm gonna avoid using the previous holes here. I'm gonna make new holes for this. And then you'll want to make sure that you have a decent amount of rubber around the stud here so that it doesn't kind of break apart. I'd say at least about half an inch. You could probably get away with a little bit less, but if you go for half an inch, then you should be good. And then what I do, you want to apply a lot of pressure and you want to go quite slow. So apply as much pressure as you can and then... Oops, that's a little bit fast, but... According to the user manual, you should go until the tool touches the rubber. You're left with something like this. I guess that's just kind of rule of thumb, but you'll want to get them deep enough. If you get them too deep, then you're kind of losing a bit of the purpose of this. So, and not going deep enough, you risk pulling them out when you're driving. So I'm gonna be putting more studs in these tires than I had last year. I'm trying to figure out where I should put them. I could go with two here. And so, just a lot of pressure and go slow. Until the tool touches. I need to gear this down, it's a bit fast. I'm gonna take off my microphone. These are quite expensive, so... We just have to deal with the onboard sound from now on. I'll do some EQ and try to make it nice, but... That's one tire down. I put additional studs in the middle this year and I also put an additional stud in every other knob on each side. Those that you see that are shiny are new this year. The other ones I had in this pattern just the opposite way last year. Now I'm going to do the other one and then it's the front. The front should be a bit easier because I know I can spin those wheels and that way I don't have to go in and out the cab to rotate the wheels so i'll see you soon moments later all right that's another tire done i just did the same thing put some extra studs in the middle here and then on every other knob on the side here and then this is the same as last year now it's time to do the front wheels would have been easier to do this if i didn't put the fenders on in the last video if you didn't see that one go check it out but anyway i'm gonna jack it up here and we're going to continue on these ones. I've already put a few in here, but we're going to do some more. These ones I can just turn by hand. So, yep, let's do that. All right, so last year I only had these that I've already put on, but I'm gonna put additional ones in this and in this. I'll put some of the bigger ones in the front tires here. Yeah, they should be fine. One eternity later. All right, three down, just one more to go. So last year, I only had in these outer knobs and so, uh, well, I did have these tiny ones, but that was just, yeah, it was kind of just for fun. These are for like small 
vehicles. This year I have one in each knob in the middle and then one in every knob on the sides as well. These are new. So yeah, this one left and then we're done. More moments later. All four wheels are done now. I actually need to put down the scraper and the bucket because there's come a lot of snow and I have a few customers that ask me to clear some snow. That's gonna be the end of this video. I'm gonna go out plowing, snow plowing that is. I'll film it and I'll make a video on that too. So that'll probably come after this one. But yeah, I'm in a bit of a hurry right now. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you if you like the video, please hit that like button. It really helps me out. And if you'd like to see more, there's a video right there you can click. Yeah. Bye. Growing up I was a weird kid. See no matter what I ever did, all the normal guys would never quit. Poking fun at me. Mama tried to make me regular. She said the Lord above was testing her. As I grew more and more peculiar.